Welcome to our podcast. I'm so excited this week to introduce Kim Clapperton. Kim is one of my favorite secret sources. We have worked together for a decade now, yes. if you can believe it. And Kim is one of our true experts in the area of fabrics and textiles. So we're going to learn a lot today from our conversation with Kim. Nice to have you here with us. Thanks for having us out to your showroom. Yes, and thank you very much for coming to our showroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, fabrics are a vast category and a very sure important is. category for our homeowners to think about mm -hmm. uh, because we're surrounded, if you think about it, we're surrounded by fabrics literally almost every moment of our lives yes. in one way or another. They're either on our bodies or we're enjoying them in our homes. Yes. We're only going to get a tiny <laughs> little piece of your fabric knowledge today, but I'd like us to give um, our listeners and homeowners just a little bit of an overview of um, what to look for in an upholstery fabric so that they can make intelligent decisions in their homes. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. So the first thing with upholstery fabrics, they are usually a little bit heavier than let's say a drapery fabric. And you want to see some sort of double rubs on the fabric. And a double rub for our non-industry okay. listeners is kind of like that machine at Ikea that pounds the chair. Exactly. Except it rubs fabric yeah. back and forth. Yeah, so that literally. is one double rub. Right. Um, which is a test that they do for um, abrasion. So a, okay. a machine you know, goes back and forth with a cotton duck fabric. Yeah. And that is one double rub. And then they test until they see a uh, change in the fabric or a thread breaks. And then okay. that is the double rub test. It okay. is important. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is important. Um, I know when we're selecting uh, or guiding our clients to make selections in fabrics, that's one of the things that we look at. What about in terms of textile composition? So definitely that is another really important thing to look at. It, it all depends, the durability depends on the fiber content too. Some fabrics are a little bit more resilient and easy to clean as well, depending on the fiber content. Um, there's lots of different types of fabrics that can be durable as well too, with all of the treatment options that mm -hmm. um, are available to put on the fabrics as well. Yeah, that's one of the things that I know we will specify. Sometimes when we're inquiring, um, say we've got a busy family yeah. with little kids and toys and all the things that go mm -hmm. along with that, sometimes pets. Yes. And we'll be selecting, say, an upholstery fabric for their sectional in mm -hmm. their family room. Yes. So how many double rubs would you look for for that type of an application? So for heavy duty residential, you want to see 15,000 or up. Some people think it's much higher, but that is the standard is 15,000. Mm -hmm. And then commercially, um, you would want to see 30. Okay. Yeah. I know that in residential, the numbers have sort of crept up over the years. And now we'll see fabrics that will take 100,000 double reps. Absolutely. You'll even see upwards to 500,000 on some fabrics, but that is not the only thing to look at. So it's not just the double rubs. Um, that's the first thing that you mm -hmm. want to look okay. for. And then um, dirt, um, cleanability as well. So how cleanable is that fabric? Even sometimes the backing. So depending on, th on the application, if, mm -hmm. if you want a more structured piece, you want uh, more of a backing for the fabric so that, that you won't get the rippling over longer bench cushions, let's say, or, or sofa cushions. Right. Um, yeah. So backing is really important too. It depends on the look too. So something really structured um, in a fabric, you would give you just a very tailored look and be, and would be stiffer. So some will have a like just the regular fabric backing. Some mm -hmm. will have a skim coat of acrylic. It's an acrylic spray. So that gives a, a fabric more, um, more structure as well too. And it can stop the fabric from stretching as well. Right. So it is important to look at the backing and in relation to the type of piece that the fabric is going on as well. Right. It's like, so let's say you have downfill cushions. You wouldn't want a really stiff backing. Like for example, this is a really good, this one has a moisture barrier, really structured backing. So if you have, downfield cushions on a sofa you would not use this no because it would feel 
stiffen. It would take away the effect of your down and it would be like sticking it almost in like a, uh, a tight polyurethane yes. bag almost. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it all depends on the type of piece that mm-hmm. you are upholstering as well. So there's that to look at, the backing, um, the cleanability, of course, the double rubs, and then fiber content as mm-hmm. well too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you mentioned cleaning. And yes. I also started to mention that there is a special treatment that we will put on fabric in advance of using it in upholstery sometimes. Yes. Depending on how fabrics are made. That's right. Um, most of the time, the fabric, like especially now, most of the fabrics come with a treatment already infused in the fibers. Um, it's gone are the days of scotch guard yeah right the topical treatments that wear off right um the treatments now are water-based and they're heat sets so they are a nanotechnology and mm-hmm. they even if you wash the fabric the treatment is still there after right it, it never wears off it lasts forever right it's yeah. literally integrated right into the fibers exactly. of the fabric exactly yeah and it never wears off and yeah it's water-based treatment so there is no chemicals left on the fabric or, and there is no off gassing either mm-hmm. i know the industry as a whole has become much more green than it used to be with Absolutely. those types of treatments and yeah. the nanotechnology is one of those advancements it's definitely that we've benefited from for sure well, when i first started with maxwell we had one book that was treated and now i think our entire upholstery collection is treated, almost like 95% of it. But liquids will roll off the fabrics, depending on the treatment though. Um, all to, like Some of the treatments are more liquid repellent than others, but they all are easy to clean if anything does get into the fibers. Such a big change Yes, from when I was growing up, when we weren't allowed in the living room. Yeah, or, <laughs> or you had to cover. Uh, I grew up in a house where we covered the, the sofa, right? Now you don't have to worry about that. It's easy to clean. It's very easy to clean. You can live on your beautiful fabrics, right? You don't have to worry. Right. I like the plastic covers on the lampshades. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they are treated to be easy to clean and rep- and repel. Like here is a, it's always a great demonstration oh, just to wow. see the, see the water <laughs> or liquid. Rolls. So it just it rolled right rolls off. Rolls right <laughs> off. Oh wow! Yes. And it doesn't even feel damp. No, here. it doesn't even soak in. Yeah. So it it will eventually um, with these fabrics, um, but it gives you a lot of time to clean it up. And if uh, if any stains do get in, or um, like let's say red wine, it is really easy to clean it out as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. That gives you lots of time. Red wine. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. And that's such a beautiful textural velvet. So you could have that cozy, huga, very um, snugly gathering place for the whole family and use a beautiful fabric. Absolutely. And not be terrified. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Not have to put a plastic cover on That's it. right. <laughs> that's right. This one actually as well, this, this um, velvet is good for outdoors as well. So this is a solution dyed fabric, so you can use it outside. And you can put it even inside in a window and it's not gonna fade like a regular fabric would too. Um, Okay, so we talked about cleanability and then the other thing um, is fiber content. So what should we be looking for in terms of a fiber content or a a different types of fiber contents? Because there are so many. There are so many. Uh, What would be your top three for busy family upholstery fabrics? Because of the treatments, there can be a number of different fiber contents. So the, a big one is polyester. Polyester is really durable. It's really cleanable. So you see a lot of polyester in the upholstery fabrics, but you can see um, wool and cotton and cotton linen. I was going to ask yeah, about absolutely linen because linen. linen has been such a big look yeah, the last definitely. few years and it's not going away. No, no. But linen, if it's not treated, well, linen is really absorbent and it can stretch as well and it's not as durable for upholstery unless it is treated or has some sort of backing yeah yeah you have to be very judicious when you're selecting a linen for an upholstery for sure uh, application and not in front of a window either right because it'll fade yeah that, that's right and it, it will actually deteriorate the uv will deteriorate the fabric and it'll start to disintegrate mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. yeah um any other Uh, final takeaways on upholstery fabrics. So the kind of fabric that you would 
literally put on a seating piece of furniture? Um, look for the double rubs and cleanability mm -hmm. and um, just pick something that you love. There's just so many options out there and you can do anything. You can be very creative with it. So I get the question a lot about allergies, right? And sensitivities um, mm -hmm. from designers. They were like, my client is really sensitive to certain certain things in the environment. So they, they want to be assured that there is no chemicals or off gassing of fabrics. So a lot of our collection is Ecotex. So Ecotex, you'll see it on, on clothing. You'll see it on, not just on, um, not just on, uh, interior design fabrics, right? right. It's, it's a standard in Europe, um, that all textiles have to have this. And because a lot of our fabrics come from Europe, they, they have this symbol. So it means that, that there are no chemicals on left on the fabric and they do not off gas as well. Ah, okay. And there's less water in their production. Like there's a whole bunch of um, other things that are related to this, but really if someone's sensitive, then look for the Ecotex symbol. Okay. Yeah. And so that means that the fabric doesn't off gas. That's right. And that's literally the emission of gases after manufacturing within the client's home. Yes, that's right. So sometimes you'll bring in like a rug or something into your home and you can really smell it. And it takes sometimes a, long, a while for it to dissipate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's the off-gassing. Yeah, that's a really important point. And what do you suggest for our four-legged friends? <laughs> Not to go on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that happens. <laughs> yes, yeah. So there are fabrics that will attract um, pet hair more than others, right? So looser weave will sometimes attract or a really high pile like a mohair could. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you would want to look for something a little bit tighter weave, less pile. Ah, less pile. okay. <laughs> Right. Less pile. Less pile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know that makes sense because I can see that this would literally act like a, a magnet almost for pet hair. It depends on the, on the content. This one isn't actually too bad. Some you'll, some attract and I think it's just sometimes content, right? Mm -hmm. In the pile. So another question I get asked a lot is cats. So it's a, one thing is dogs, but cats will go and they'll scratch. Mm -hmm. And really the only fabrics um, that I can recommend for cats would be velvet or microfiber. That they, those are fabrics they, that yeah, they just don't they like to scratch. Yeah, anything like a, yes. like a weave like this, they will go after. Even, even a faux leather, they'll go after as well too. Some, it depends on the cat. Mm -hmm. But that is a question I get asked a lot too. Kim, one of the things that... Um, our listeners might find really interesting is the range of prices for uh, all designer upholstery and window fabrics and how that can vary. What makes one fabric more expensive than another? Okay, so yeah, it can vary greatly, definitely. So fiber content mm -hmm. is probably number one. Um, the more natural fibers like wool, mohair, um, like a thick pile wool like this is just pricier just because of the fiber content and then the weave of the fabric. So how much, how many colors are in the fabric, mm -hmm. in a woven fabric, like which you can see, this is a really great example. This is an indoor outdoor, but in a woven, you'll see it, the same, the pattern on the back as well. Um, and then, so a woven fabric with lots of colors is pricier to make for the mill to make. So it increases the cost as well too. So something like this too, more expensive. This is uh, cut velvet, but the weave with all of the colors. So the more colors, typically the more expensive the fabric is too. For example, a cotton print would be less expensive. Right, because it's, yeah. it's just printed onto the fabric. Ah, okay. And you mentioned mohair. Oh, <laughs> it's luxurious. <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorite yeah. fabrics. How is mohair sourced or made? So it's from the Angora goat. Ah. Actually, it's a, from a certain goat and um, it is naturally hydrophobic, which means li liquids will just roll right off. Naturally fire resistant and it is very resilient, the, the, the fibers from crushing. So hmm. it's not going to flatten. Um, like let's say a cotton velvet might. Right. Yeah. Yes. You have to be very careful when you choose velvets 
because some will mark and others won't. Yes. So you have to manipulate the fabrics and play with them a bit to understand what it is that you're specifying for your client. That's right. And, and how it's going to perform. That's right. And the maintenance, yeah. something like that too. So Kim, give us some pointers, please, regarding the maintenance of upholstery fabrics. Okay. So it depends on the upholstery, right? The, the fiber content or the pile. The pile is really important. So um, if a regular vacuum for a velvet is important. So it keeps that pile, um, it stops it from flattening. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. So a vacuum is always good because it, it, it releases any dust and dirt as well. And then, um, yeah, you can use an upholstery cleaner for a lot of the upholstery fabrics as well. Mm -hmm. S faux leathers, um, you just need to wipe clean, mm -hmm. right? But there is maintenance. Like just because even, um, because the fabric has the treatment on it does not mean it's not going to get dirty, right? right? It will still attract dust and dirt at times, right? Sometimes the, the stain will get into the fibers, so they do need to be cleaned. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I know from my years of working around and with fabrics and experts like yourself, the best thing you can do for your upholstered furniture is vacuum it. Yes. And very few people do, actually. <laughs> no. Uh, because, you know, we're all, we, there's dust constantly in there our is. homes, especially yeah. here, yeah. where the air is so dry. Yeah. When we talk about pile, it's just the depth of the fibers. Right. Really. The length of the pile. Really. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so you hear about it mostly in velvet or mohair. This is a woven fabric, so it doesn't really have a pile. So it's not going to flatten, let's say, um, like a velvet might. Or a deep pile deep might pile. be another way of yes. saying that. Deep yeah. pile. Yeah. Thank you. And then a mohair, a little less, and then something like this, which is a low cut velvet, low pile velvet. You can feel the fiber move. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, mm -hmm. And usually it's a, it's a, it has a really soft hand. Yeah. Something with a pile. Yeah. And, and hand is something. Um, I saw a little Instagram clip, I don't know, it was on somebody's, and it said, how to tell if you're a designer. And then it showed this <laughs> hand touching everything. It's important. The right? hand of the fabric is very important. Yeah. yeah. You want to like the way that it feels. Right. So would you suggest even a, a brush for something with a pile? You or, could. Or just you vacuuming? Could. I think vacuuming does, does a really good job. Okay. Yeah. And then just spot clean, really, any marks, stains. If you have a little spill or something gets on it, you can just spot clean. And that will do most of the job, mm -hmm. right? And then every once in a while, if you need to bring out an upholstery cleaner, like one of those, you know, water extracting cleaners, um, yeah, you can do it on most of the fabrics. Not everything, but most you can. When we talk about window coverings, what are the considerations for the fabric that we choose? Okay, so for drapery... Um, fabrics. Here's here is an example. Um, it's usually a lighter fabric and drapable, mm. right? It's got to have a really nice drape. Oh, that's gorgeous! Typical. Yeah, look at the way that hangs. Yeah, and so again, these are mostly our uh, drapery fabrics on this side, and mm -hmm. the options are endless. Like you can have solids. This is kind of a semi sheer sheer, um, but yeah, drapability is probably the most important. You can line some of the drapery fabrics as well. So yeah. if you choose, a, let's say, 100% linen, you definitely would want to line that. But a, a polyester, a sheer like this, you could leave in a window unlined. It does not have to be because it right. will stand up. Because it'll stand up yes. to the heat of the sun and, and the also UV. the UV rays. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah, so I that is that what you look for in, yeah, for drapery mm -hmm. fabrics. There have been times in my career where I've used a loose weave fabric okay. on a window yes, and it may not have been the best choice. It was specified as a drapery fabric, but it was one of those weird situations where the fabric, the weave actually so sagged. It's, and it stretched. And it stretched. Right. Yes. And so my client kept calling me and her drapes kept getting longer. <laughs> yes, that can happen. So that's where you look at content and you do look at the weave too, because the weave is very important. So something like this is pretty stable, but some that are even more open, mm. let's say this, it's a little bit more open. Oh yeah. Right. It might. Yeah. You can yeah. see th almost see through that. Definitely. So some of the more open weaves are, 
And a workroom will typically do this. They'll leave it hanging for a while to let it stretch out. If it's going to relax, I guess relax is, is more the word. Yeah. Yeah. So it can happen in a, a, a more open weave. And it can also happen depending on fiber content, like a linen. So a linen will change in a window with humidity. So higher humidity, it's going to stretch. And then right. when that humidity reduces, it will shrink back up. So right. you have to kind of give that allowance and be okay with it changing in, in the length. Mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. And your workroom, which is the place where you would get your draperies yes. made or the designer would have the draperies Absolutely. Uh, made, um, when they make a custom window covering, will absolutely take those kinds of things into account. Yes. And when they do the site measure to make sure that the drapery is tailored to the window, yes. they will allow for that little bit of extra, you know, shrinkage and or relaxing and tightening that yes. uh, an organic natural fabric will go through. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So living with natural fabrics is also a little bit different than living with, say, polyesters. Definitely. So polyester, like a tighter weave polyester, it will not change in the window at all. Um, what about double um, draperies or, you know, combinations of shears and say a velvet. Are you seeing a lot of that these that days? That is becoming much more popular again to do the double treatment, like the, yeah, the shear and the velvet or blackout fabric, especially in, let's say a master bedroom, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So we're seeing a lot more of that. So double rod. Yeah. You mentioned lining, like putting in a lining. Yes. You could, you could do this unlined or you could do it lined. Yes. And linings, in my experience, have typically been a blend. So it's like maybe a 50-50 polyester cotton fabric that is used as the liner. Yes. So there's different weights of lining. Um, yeah, but there's blackout, right, which gives you total blackout. There are 50-50 and some are 100% poly as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's quite a range. There's some interlining for silks. Yeah, there's quite a few lining options, mm -hmm. too, depending on... Um, how much light you want filtered. Right. Yeah. Speaking of silks, okay. uh, let's also talk about how silk reacts to sunlight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's affected uh, even more so, I'd say, than, than a linen. Yeah. Definitely. So a silk, 100% silk, which we don't see as much right now, it'll, it'll make its way back. Um, but it definitely needs to be lined and often interlined so that the sun doesn't deteriorate it. It still will happen mm -hmm. eventually, but um, definitely needs to have a lining. It's yeah. beautiful. It's a very luxe, um, opulent look mm -hmm. for sure, but um, lining is very important with the silk. <laughs> it is, and and that's one of the things that... Um, you know, you, you learn fairly early in your career, if you are going to use silk, you want to use it on a less warm window, maybe a north exposure. Definitely. Lined and interlined so that the, um, the silk is... Um, a little more protected. A little more protected. Yeah, that's yeah. a great way to say it. Yes. A hot south window, even with double UV yeah. um, argon gas and all of the technology that we have in windows to help reduce the amount of light that comes in, the heat will still break down the silk yeah. on a hot south wall. That's okay, Krista, you being the expert designer, mm -hmm. I've pulled these fabrics. How would you use them? Mm, I love these. I love how cozy they all feel and I love the energy in the pattern. I would do, in the cozier fabric, I would do one for the sofa and another for a pair of occasional chairs. Then I would do an ottoman in either this one as a surprise, yeah. could be fun, or I would do the ottoman in this beautiful uh, kind of zigzag print. <clears throat> I do toss pillows in this one, and I love this. I'm a little obsessed with this drapery it's fabric. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Okay, thank you. Do I pass? You do, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, Kim. This has been so fun. It has, yeah. <laughs>
Okay. Kim, thank you so much for having us in today. It's been so much fun visiting your showroom and seeing all the beautiful fabrics and especially benefiting from your deep, deep experience and expertise in, in this arena. So I'll look forward to seeing you in the studio soon. And uh, thanks for having us in today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much yeah. for coming in. Thanks for, thanks for having us. <laughs>